Thank you, Eddie. Uh, great introduction. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, today's webinar, uh, I'll open the subject on tool mounting and tool rotation, as already Eddie says. But uh, for sure, um, for sure, it will be uh, a subject that um, will help to, to all of you to actually better understand how to program your part, how to correctly mount your tool, how to insert your STL holders, and, and etc. Okay, so in every Milton project, you need to show to your old, to your customer that you, what uh, the, the 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 machining the part on your on your machine actually need to be real life, and um, the, the 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 kinematic of your machine it needs to be suitable, and everything is actually taken into account. Okay. So I would just basically today start with the tool mounting. As in previous webinars, I actually used the part over here, as you can see it. And because I'll talk more about tools and how to handle it, I will delete all of those operations because in, in this webinar it's not so important. OK, I'll just jump to my tool table over here. and. Here I have many tools, as you see it also in previous webinars, but also in this example, I will delete them all. Okay, now <clears throat> I'll just add one turning tool, and it will be external turning with the insert. And uh, the very first thing what everybody should do, you know, before uh, start definition of everything, here you have the the tool mounting itself, where our machine preview will pops up. Now we already talked about uh, some of those um, tools over here, so I'll not mention uh, them, but I will use them in this webinar. So as soon as you start with the definition of your tool, um, the, the 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 coordinate system of our station will be located over here, and our tool tip position of our insert is defined uh, in the tool tip position. Uh, uh, dialog window over here, what you have seen, uh, and this is the coordinates relative to the coordinate system that is presented over here. Okay, now the, the why I like this uh, preview is that because it's very dynamic. Now as you, if you go over here, here you can see where my tool is mounted and by default if you don't have any tools over here, it will be mounted automatically on the upper turret. Now, of course, we have uh, two more options. It's the lower turret, and as well, we have our tool storage, where you can, you know, we, you don't need to use those kind of tools, but you can store them, and later on, you can use into the project. Okay, so if I click on my lower turret, you'll clearly see the following. Our tool that we defined earlier, it's actually now mounted to our lower turret. Now, as you can see over here, I'll also discuss um, in the last uh, webinar, how to define the coordinate system and uh, the, the VM, a little bit more about VMID, but for now this is not important. But just try to uh, to focus now on the coordinate system that is presented in our machine preview. So this is very important. I'll show you later on what wh why. Okay, now. Every customer and every potential uh, a, a, a deal that you'll have in the mill turn requires, you know, some preparation. For sure, uh, the, the kinematic of the machine is very important, but also what customers uh, usually very like is to see all STL holders that are inside. Now, why is that important? Of course, it's a mo a more, uh, how to say, intuitive, it's more, how to say, um, a real life machining where a customer can say, okay, this is real what I have on the machine. But from another hand, uh, for, 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 um, um, it's also very useful because of the collision check. Okay, so everybody should know that if you put the correct STL holders, this is the main purpose of it, that's for sure collision check. And if you can show to the customer that we can really show them the collision on, on our STL holder and on our tool, this is a great benefit, okay? So that's why I choose uh, for the fir very first subject on, on today's webinar is to talk how actually to load um, uh, uh, 
some 3D uh, 3D holder and load it into a solid cam. And as you will be able to, to see very soon, I will load it in this environment, and I think it will be a very, very, very useful tip. Um, also, we discussed about uh, those kind of topics before, but I think this is a very great moment to show you how we can actually do it in SolidCam 2016. So I'll just save an exit over here. And for this demonstration, actually, I choose basically two tools. The first one, it's um, uh, basically both will be for the our lower turret, and one it's uh, focused on on the the, the, the milling ter tool that is mounted over here, and um, the both uh, tools are basically for, for the for the rotary turret. Um, this will this will be for the milling on from from the face, and over here very frequently uh, a, a and common question you know comes also to my uh, uh, to my desk as a support manager, it's uh, how we can actually support uh, two turning tools on the same holder. Now, the the the, the thing is, uh, and today I'll show you how to define the two turning tools. And as you can see over here, we have totally two different holders as well as the two different inserts. So one for sure will. You know, be capable to work on the main spindle, as you can see the, the tool on the left side, and on the right side it's our uh, tool and our insert that actually are capable to work on a back spindle. So I think it will be kind of useful. And uh, so let's just get started. I'll just go back to my first one, and the very first thing what you need to do uh, in in uh, for definition of the STL holder, it's actually to define the coordinate system. Now the coordinate system it's very very important where you will put it and as well its orientation. So I'll just jump to to the machine itself, um, and it will be a useful tip uh, to explain you how you need to 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 create the coordinate system and its orientation. So over here we have a lower turret. As I said, uh, we will make um. Uh, um um, example on the lower turret, and over here, what you can see it's our tool holder, or let's say tool uh, position on the on the turret itself. Now, if I click over here on the on the specific tool station, what you will be able to see on the turret on the first one, it's the orientation of the coordinate system itself for the position. As you can see, the Z it's going to the to the right, the, the X is going down and the Y is going towards the machine. Now this is very useful and uh, in with this rule we will also define our coordinate system in SOLIDWORKS. Okay, so if, just for better explanation, our tool in the, whole, in the turret will be mounted in this way. So the main spindle is over here, the back spindle is uh, on the right side, so the same philosophy I will I will I will uh, use over here, and the, the, it's pretty clear that our holder will be basically mounted on this surface, right? So I'll create a coordinate system that will be in the middle of these uh, 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 cylinders, right? So I'll just go to my insert reference geometry, and first of all, I will make a point. My point will be arc on center, and just I'll click on this uh, this uh, arc over here, and I will get uh, the, the the point uh, right in the middle. And as soon as uh, I have already my point is selected, I will create my coordinate system at exactly the same point. Now I, we need to match this coordinate system to the one over here. So those two points will be made in our solid cam. Will be uh, will will be made. Yeah. So um, what we need to do? Let's make the same orientation vectors as it's on machine simulation. So what what I'm gonna do? Uh, I'll just click on my X. So it's going over here, and as you can see, the X is going up. It should go down, and my Y axis is actually going. Uh, towards the machine, but again, it should be 
uh, towards the machine. So over here, uh, like in, in, in this example, like I uh, now, now show you. And the Z, it's now automatically defined. It's going towards the back spindle. OK, I'll accept it. And let's change the name of this coordinate system. Uh, I, will, I will name it like holder mounting point. And this will be for sure our holder mounting point. Now, now I'll just, you know, um, maybe not the, the point. But here now, clearly, we can see where it's our coordinate system and how it's, uh, how it's orientated. Now, let's do the same thing. I'll just save it. And let's do the same thing for the, for the turning tool. So we can follow it, uh, you know, in parallel. So I'll ju just do the same. So I'll go insert point center of the arc and create a coordinate system. Okay, as you can see, everything is defined right now. I'll just again go over here to see the coordinate system. Okay, as you can see, this the coordinate system is the first step that you need to do in order to define it. The second thing what you need to do is to measure where are our tooltip or where our tool are mounted according to our coordinate system. So I'll just jump to easier example on our milling tool, and it's pretty clear to everybody that my tool will be mounted on this surface over here and in the middle of uh, in this axis, right? So I can also create over here some point. So for easier um, measuring, and I'll click on point two, and as well I'll click on the holder mounting point where I will go to my weight and I will measure it. I will be relative to my holder mounting point, and over here I'll just jump to to the better view to to, to see it. Okay. As you can see, for now you don't need to remember it, uh, but here we have uh, uh, the, the 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 point. It's located on 112 and 90 uh, millimeters on the X. Okay, so. This is something that I'll remember and I'll show you how to define it later. But this is very, very important point. So let's just jump now to to um, our inserts. And here the, the, the insert is a little bit different because on um, on the milling tool, we have to define where the, the, the tool will be mounted. But uh, on the turning tool, you need to define where is the tool tip. So now, of course, uh, the definition of the tool tip, uh, it's, uh, you need to zoom in the insert itself. And in the cross section of those two lines will be the point. So this is the point that we are actually looking for. But for now, it's not so important. So I'll just, just define it roughly. So I'll not lose so much time in definition of the maybe sketch or something. So I'll just click on the coordinate system itself. I'll go to, sorry, to my measurements. I'll just roughly click on on the edge here on the, in the middle point and on my coordinate system. And again, here I'll be also relative to my coordinate system one that is defined. And here I have you know the 57 millimeters. It's on the Z, and on the X we have 125. And on my right insert, uh, what we have over here is. Um, it's again on the X we have 125 and on Z we have 56.8. Okay. Great. Now let's I'll just again jump to my milling phase tool. And now I'll do an export it to the STL. As you can see over here, we have basically two uh, to uh, geometries, so those geometry needs to be actually exported into one SDL. So the, the, those two geometries will be merged. So I'll just go to File, Save it as, and over here we have a format, and I would like to save it as the STL. The name for now it's not important, and you can define it uh, the, the 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 holder um, 
manufacturer name or however you would like to okay so for now it's not important I'll just jump to the options because this is very important and the two checkbox needs to be uh, selected so do not translate STL out to data to positive space and to save all components of an assembly in a single file this is very important and as here is automatically selected it's that our coordinate system output should be you know our defined holder mounting point that we defined it a few moments ago I'll click OK and I'll just save it now I'll go to my turning tool over here and what I have here it's also those tools actually have insert itself now for the insert here it's very important to delete it why because uh, the, the, the when we export the STL if we will have this insert uh, the, the, the collision check will be also performed according to the insert but the, the, the insert is some it's a dynamic element that solid can define it automatically okay so therefore we can delete insert geometry itself and replace it with the solid cam ones so what I'll go and do I'll just open the part itself and uh, over here I'll just de delete the geometry and just simply right click and hit delete I'll just save it and close it and I'll do the same thing on the right tool okay okay now everything is ready for exporting you know the STL of of the turning a multi positioning turning holder so I'll just do the same thing I'll just do save as um, I'll just go over here to my STL I'll just go to options and everything is already pre-selected so I'll just click OK and save it okay I'll just close those parts as well as a milling one and we are back to the solid inside the solid cam so what I'm gonna do over here is um, um, but one more thing uh, the, the 3d models of the holders are basically taken from the from the web so you can go to ISCAR, you can go to any uh, holder manufacturer and uh, for sure they have a huge library of the holders and uh, I think it's a great great um, thing actually to take some amount of the holder that will be standard for you so you'll, you'll use it in most of your Milton projects you know uh, for I, as I said it's a for a, it's a, for a great uh, demonstration um, so I'll go to my tools over here I'll go to solid cam and over here we have a tool library in and over here in our drop down menu here we have our tool STL holders as soon as you click on that this is pretty common that you maybe seen it also before but here we have two folders it's our milling and our turning which actually has a standard library of our STL holders now we will define uh, our new holders and also we can put it inside our default one for the milling and one for the turning but for now I would like to show you a few more a few more options that we have so I'll not use any of these but in, for for for, uh, for this ex example I'll just go to my holders and do a right click on it and I will add a folder I'll just put you know the the holder name uh, manufacturer name and I'll just go right click on it and I'll add an STL holder what we need to do is just to search for those STLs and here they are as you can see over here um, we have our coordinate system that we actually uh, generate in SOLIDWORKS and export it now I'll just rotate it and now you you actually understand it what, what actually happens now in, in this is example where uh, also you have two main uh, points in this environment the one over here is the red dot which ex actually represent our holder mounting point 
which is totally the same as if I click over here, this, uh, this point, as you can see it here. And as well, we have our blue point, which actually represent where my tool will be mounted. So these two points are most important for any holder. So now you can actually understand why I generate here the coordinate system. Because I want my holder mounting point to be always 0, 0, 0. But of course, you can, you know, just move your, uh, you, you can use your mouse wheel. And you can clearly see this red dot over here. Like I said, in this example, it will be 0, 0, 0. And as we defined it in previous, over here what we have, it's on the x. I think it was minus 19. And over here it was minus 112. As you can see over here, now this is exactly the point where I would like to have my tool. Okay. The, 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 the holder is already saved. You can change its name. And for now, I don't, I don't need to exit from it, but I just can save it. It's a new, new icons that we get over here in 2016. Okay, I'll just add two more. I'll add SDL holder. I'll just go to my multi-position returning tool. And this one, I'll just go right-click in this environment. I'll go to ZX view where I can actually also rotate it. So let's define, you know, the, 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 two, uh, the tool tip position of our, of our um, turning tool for our main spindle. The same, the holder mounting point will be 0, 0, 0. And um, the tool mounting point, it's actually minus 125 on the X, as you can see it over here, and minus 57. As you can see, this is the point where our nose of, of our insert will be. Again, here I can, you know, just uh, create, you know, change the name. And I can add a new STL holder for our back spindle. Again, it will be um, 0, 0, 0 on the holder mounting point. On our tool mounting point, it's also minus 125, but on our Z, it's actually um, plus 56.8. And here it is. As easy as, as that. So just now, over here, I'll just put back spindle, and I'll just now save and exit. Now, you saw what is the procedure. And as soon as you build your, your, your library of your XTL holders, you don't need to define it again and again. Now it's already saved it and you can run into the, any Milton project and you can use the same holders itself. Okay, so that's a great benefit. So I'll go to my tool table and I'll immediately click on my mounting. And what I have over here, it's, um, it's the tool, tool tip, sorry, tool insert with a coordinate system of our station. Now, look, what will happen if I'll just go to my holders, and here we have our global, and here you see the, the, the standard one that I explained late, uh, uh, before, and I'll just go my, to my milling, we have over here the tool turning, and here we have the one that we actually defined it. So I'll start not from the from the turning one, but let's define the new one. And the new one, for example, will be on station number two. So I'll just create a new milling. For example, I'll take an add mill. And over here, I'll maybe put eight millimeters of the, in the diameter. As, as you can see over here, we have the station number two. I can change it to station number three, and you see how dynamically um, the, uh, inside the machine preview, you can see the change. Okay, I'll just jump to my holder, and over here I have my STLs. So you just need to click over here, and to find uh, the one that actually need, that, that actually we defined. Now I'll click on this checkbox over here, and now the flip commands actually are available. Now, as you can see, I'll just jump to my front 
And here I really like this, this icon, it's to focus the tool. You can see that our coordinate system of our station as well of our coordinate system of the holder are matched. It means that we don't need to use actually the, 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 the commands for the rotating of the holder, which actually if you want you can use it and you can see how dynamically it's changing in the both, both pictures over here. So if I change it, here it is. I very like it. Okay, so this is this is the holder mounting point, they are matched, here is where my tool is mounted. Over here what we have is something that I will also explain in some previous webinars and uh, you can change the tool mounting orientation of your tool which is very important. And over here you can just play with it to get correct um, orientation and here it is. According to our tool tip position and our tool mounting point the parameter that can change this distance it's over here so you, you uh, it's it's called outside holder or OHL and if I change here to 45 you'll clearly see how actually it's changed so very dynamic and I really like it okay let's let's now define those two turning tools I just jump to my first one over here and as you can see as I click on on this specific tool the, 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 the turret will automatically rotate itself. Okay, I'll just jump to my holders, I just jump to my global and I'll go to my folder. Over here I have my main spindle. I'll go again to ZX view. And I'll click it on it. Okay, now a few things actually changed. The first one, the, the tooltip position, it's as soon as you click on, on this checkbox, the tooltip position is not now not any more related to the station position. But it actually, as you can see over here, we have our coordinate system of insert mounting point. Okay? And everything now, all those uh, additional angle, for example, a parameter, tooltip position, it's now related to this point, not anymore to the station itself. So th why is this important? This is now much easier for, for the customer to define where its insert is. So <clears throat> now because this holder actually has also the, the, the shaft, uh, sh sorry, the, the, the shank, I don't need actually to, 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 to use it uh, from the solid cam. So I can turn it off with simple clicking on insert only. As soon as I do that, I can see only the insert. Where I need to, the only thing what I have to do now is just to put it over here in the zero. And here it is. Maybe to, to, to put a little bit larger one. And maybe, you know, the corner radius different. And you can see how dynamically you can define it and you can see it, everything in environment of the of the machine okay now to the tricky part how to define uh, the same holder uh, and a different tool on another position so th those are th those are the steps I'll just create a new turning tool I'll do a you know external turning over here and as you do that, the number of the, 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 the tool and also the station, it's defined automatically. So <clears throat> this, is, this is pretty much normal. So the, 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 the computer doesn't know actually that we want to define it, you know, also in the first one. So this thing you have to do manually. So you have to go to your station and to click on the first one where my first tool is actually defined. Now, as soon as I click on this, you will see following change. Our position over here is now A, and as soon as I click it over here, it will be automatically changed to the B. And if I click on this drop-down menu, you will see that A, it's not possible to select it. Why? Because I have it over here, so it's reserved, and I cannot use it. Okay. As soon as you see it, uh, I will leave the... the 
the shank open so you can uh, maybe easily define uh, the, the orientation of the tool. What you have to use over here to work on the back spindle, it's simply to, you know, flip it. And now, still it's not in the perfect position, but I'll use the insert only. And as soon as you defined um, uh, the tooty position, it will be in correct place. Now we are coming to the point, do we need to again define the holder or not? Now, if you do in, in in, in both, uh, in, in one of the, those ways, it will be correct. But the only difference actually it is about the tooltip position, how you will like to define it. If you don't select your holder, you will have to define your tooltip position according to, uh, to the station coordinate system itself. So I'll have to define over here minus 125, right? And over here it was 56.8. Okay, so it's let's change uh, for for this instance. Um, let's change the the tooltip um, uh, tool uh, insert uh, uh, type. So it will be for sure 55. The size it's not perfect, so I'll change it maybe. Yep, and the radius is it's okay. Okay, so this is the insert position over here, but <clears throat> now you will not make a mistake if you create the holder itself also for this one. So I'll just go to the, my global, I'll just go to the turning, and here I have for my multi-positioning turning tool for the back spindle. So I'll click on that, and now what you need to do only, you know, define as zero and zero, and again, I think this this way, I think it's a little bit more easier, it's not a mistake to define it in, in both ways. And um, yeah, now you know how to define all STL holders and how to insert it into the soil cam. And trust me, every Milton project try to define with, with the holders, with the true inserts, with the true milling tools, all customers will very respect it and really like it. And if you can show them, you know, how we are detecting the, the collision, it's a great benefit. Okay. I'll just do now save. And <clears throat> one more thing uh, regarding to the STL holders that uh, I, until now I just focused on the lower turret, but I would like, you know, to also to show you a couple of the tricks on our upper turret. So what I'm going to do here is I'll define my turning tool. And again, I'll just, you know, select the the one uh, 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 over here. But I'll change my turret to my upper one. Okay. Now, everybody uh, have um, actually. I get very uh, common uh, 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 and frequently asked question: How to define the holder uh, under 40, uh, 45 degrees to have the tool? So uh, whenever I work on my main spindle, the, my upper turret is very close to my jaws and to chuck so I can hit it and I want to prevent the collision. So using these special holders will allow me, you know, to, to move my upper turret to the safe position in order to, to machine and to turn the, 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 the part. So let's go to our holders over here and I'll go to our global and in our default turning uh, uh, holders. And I'll just try to find some of the, those. Maybe I'll just go to my ZX view. And uh, I'll try to find some suitable one. And here it is. This is the real good example of the holder that can hold the, 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 the tool under 45 degrees. So I'll just click over here and this is right example what will happen if you you know if the holders itself are not defined well for this kind of machine actually you'll need to use some of the rotation tip of your STLs but 
it's not a problem. You have, you know, your great machine preview as well as this picture over here. So what you need to do is only to rotate it. As well, you can see over here the blue point. The blue point actually represents where my tool is mounted, right? So if I click to my quarter system and uncheck it, uh, you, you will be very able to see this coordinate system as well. And the orientation now of the tool needs to be regarding to it. So the very first thing what I'm going to do, I'll just rotate it 45. But before I do that, you'll notice that this tool is wrongly mounted. So it should be, you know, on the, on the right. So I'll just, you know, flip it. And I will use the insert over here. I know it's 45 degrees, so you can also use the control, you know, so for easier definition. And here we are. I really like this button, focus tool. OK. And this is how easily you can actually define your holder and your tool. And tool tip position is defin defined according to the coordinate and system over here. Now everything is very visual, visualized. OK, so let's see how that actually affects in our operation. So I'll just save it and exit. And let's define some of the turning operations over here. Uh, I'll just do very simple ones. Uh, I'll just define some on the face. And I will use my upper turret on the main, and I'll click new. Over here, I'll just select simple geometry, I'll accept it. Of course, I'll extend my geometry. And I'll go now to my tools. I'll go select. And I'll select tools uh, number, number four on the upper turret. And as you can see, the station, it's one, it's always over here because uh, it's a spindle type. OK. Now, a few things I'll have to, to mention over here. Um, and it's quite important uh, for this webinar. The main focus now, you, you, you have to understand how SolidCAD 2016 actually understands tool position according to the Mac 1. The first picture, what you can see over here on, on, in the tool, ta uh, tool uh, tab, it's that we cha completely change the picture that you can see here in order to def define, you know, the tool angle. And as you can see over here, we have the, 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 the part axis and as well we have the coordinate system. This coordinate system represents our MAC position. In this example, it's MAC 1. As you can see, we have additional angle of 45 degrees. You can change this to 0. And as soon as I do that, you can see lively also on our left corner. And also this coordinate system, what you can see, it, it represents our Mac 1 position. And the tool is oriented according to it. As you can see, this picture over here, and if I zoom in, over here are the same. As well, if I move you know, use my visual tool over here, you'll clearly see that we are talking about the same thing. Now, what I want to do over here, actually, is to rotate and to use it from the front, right, over here. So if I click it, you will see that SolidCAM will automatically do it, as well, he will automatically calculate my angle of our upper turret. And if I go over here, I will be able to see it. What about the machine preview? You can click it, and you can see it as well. Also, here we have a few four useful um, refresh buttons, I can say it, where I can update my machine or update my stock. And maybe I can update my fixture so I can see it clearly. Now, <clears throat> the very important improvement what we have add over here is that um, we are calling it also automatic spin direction feature. In the previous version of the SolidCAM, uh, user was the was the, the the actually 
who was very experienced uh, uh, with, uh, with every machine that he has in uh, his workshop and he has to define correctly how his machine actually you know rotates uh, uh, to the clockwise or clockwise, uh, counterclockwise according to his um, insert phase so in order to as you can see over here to get correct machining according to the insert phase here we need you know to understand how we have our what is our spin direction in Stolican 2016 we improved this in a much higher level and as you can see over here we have representative here STLs arrows that actually shows the user what is our spin direction and as you can see over here it's gray it means it's automatically calculated according to the uh, insert phase according to the output of the X it, if you click on the X plus or X minus he will rotate the spin I'll just move this a little bit now pay attention also if, if I if I click on the, my spin direction over here I can change it manually so it can be counterclockwise or it can be clockwise as you can see everything is pretty pretty dynamic and don't worry about the target it gets lost why because we don't have any operation before okay so we don't have any reference so I'll just move it to some safety over here now what it means I'll just go to my X output to the positive space as you can see my spin direction is out will be automatically uh, unselected and choose to the clockwise and what actually mean clockwise if, if I now open if I now show you over here you will clearly see that it's going actually to counterclockwise now in the most of the Milton machine and especially on this particular one if I go to my left view and turn off my my STLs of the machine you, you can see that actually my STLs is going you know to the clockwise direction so in most of the cases the, the, or in the spin direction is actually defined according to the view from the motor itself okay so I hope you will find this very useful and uh, as I said before now the customer cannot make any mistake and make uh, a wrong decision which will actually uh, bring it to the you know uh, at least you know the operator will run the the, 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 the part and he will notice uh, at the time but this can damage your tool this can damage your your part and as well the machine itself now we totally um, uh, calculate that and uh, bring you know user to the minimum that he can actually affect on this okay and the very last thing um, what I would like to, 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 to show you uh, it's um, I also it, it was also mentioned it before it's how to use actually the single home um, uh, programming and uh, why is that very useful and what are the, uh, actually the advantages so first of all what I would like to, to show you is over here we define our upper turret um, uh, on the main spindle right just to clean up the face so let's start with um, with the same operation I just double click it over here and I really like this icon over here and I'll just use 7 copy now in the previous version of the solid cam what you have to do over here you 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 need, you need to change the your submachine that's 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 okay and it's obvious and uh, but as soon as you do that the coordinate system will be changed as well together the, co the 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 geometry will be lost and also the but the parameters of uh, of the operation will be as well set to the default now <clears throat> This is one of the advantages, and I'll show you a little bit more later. So I'll just create a new 
and I would not like to do it with the wireframe. I would also like to show you the solid one, uh, very useful. I'll just create a new. I'll cl click on this surface over here and maybe click on this surface over here. And as you can see, this is automatically generated. I'll just accept it. And here is uh, my geometry. So for now, I'll just save it. OK, the tool is not in correct position. OK, so I'll just select the new. And I'll just select any of these that I select, um, that I create. Actually, I can only define the one on the main spindle, right? Perfect. <clears throat> I'll go my technology. I'll choose the outside. And I'll just say save and calculate. Of course, I'll just do the following thing. I'll also define the, the turning method for the finishing. And I really like the, the, the icon over here. It's to save and calculate all related operations. As you can see, the one is now different. So, so we can also use this. And it will automatically generate the operation that actually affects on this. OK. Now, the very first thing what you can see over here, I'll just jump in this particular operation. And I'll click on machine view. Here we have my holder, my part, direction. As you can see, this is correctly defined. So it's going to, uh, to, to clockwise to perform the machining. But one thing is different. We improve the solid cam, uh, the way of thinking. And uh, as you can see over here, the generated toolpad, it's not anymore down below. The, the, the toolpad down below will be only generated in the balanced rough. Now all the op turning operations will be defined on upper side. Now why, why we create in that way? I'll show you in a couple of the moments. I'll move it this a little bit so you can see it. And also I, maybe I can use here the turning view. I really like this one this icon over here. And um, as you can see over here, we have, as I also said in the previous operation, we have our coordinate system over here and our x, z position. And also we have over here this picture, which actually represent, as I said, Mac 1 position, z and x. But <clears throat> so according to this coordinate system, our toolpad will be generated. But you may ask yourself why the holder is in this position. And as well, if I click over here on my visual tool, you can see like the tool is actually on the upper turret. But remember, this is from now on general rule. It's always related to specific Mac. Okay? So we are not actually, um, how to say, uh, you can still use the multi Macs, okay? But this, in this webinar, I just want to show you the benefit of using only one. So, OK, it seems that it's on the upper turret. But what's happening with actually, if I click it over here and use my rotation tool, you can clearly see that, aha, uh -huh, this is my lower turret, and this is my geometry, and this is my toolpad. And now this seems pretty logical, right? Now. <clears throat> OK, but how the user can know, are we on upper or we are on the lower? In machine preview itself. So if, I, if you click it over here, uh, maybe I'll just need to go back and exit. OK, as you can see over here, if I select my second operation, my Mac will be automatically orientated according to our specific submachine. And as well, if I just double click on my first one, and I go to my machine preview, you will clearly see that our Mac actually is going up. So this is generated automatically. And I think it's very important uh, to you to understand 
how actually solid cam generates it for now. Now this is the one of the benefits, but the second uh, I think it's much more important. So you remember from the first webinar, I actually show you how you know to use the channel synchronization, and here you have a lot of tools to to make your uh, operations uh, performed or your Milton multi-channel machine. In in you can do it in different ways. So you can um, change the operation uh, order. You can uh, sim uh, you can synchronize two operations and. There's a lot of combinations uh, that you can do it there, and sometimes you'll get frustrated because maybe it will be better uh, and you'll get less uh, cycle time if you change some of the operation. And for this particular example, it, this is very easy because over here I have just one operation, but imagine that you have a lot of operations and now I just you know, decide to change it. For example, my upper turret, I would like to do it on my lower turret. And but the problem that was in in the past that as soon as change my submachine, you know, um, all my geometries and my parameters will get lost. And I, again, I need to spend a lot of time in the programming of the part itself and not focused to the how to solve my problem and get minimal cycle time. Today, this it's the minimum time that you need to do in order to get tool ready. Just change your submachine and change the tool actually that will cut this, that you will use actually on this uh, operation. And as soon as you do that, you just need to save and calculate and everything is done as you can see it. So I hope you like it. Um, uh, if you if you uh, will have any any questions on on this subject, please let me know. Today it's the right moment to ask it. And the very last thing what I want to show you also today, it's the thing. Um, <clears throat> it's also regarding to the tool uh, tool mounting, but I didn't want to do it on the, on the beginning of the webinar. Uh, over here we have our a new parameter. It's uh, delta uh, y. Which actually allows us, you know, to change also the mounting on the y-axis. So it's, if I if it's moving it, you can clearly see how it actually affects on on the, the position of the tool. But of course, if you change uh, the position of the tool in this example, you you will get an error message because the the turning tool has to be, you know, on the on the y zero. So just now I'll open the project. That actually will show you, you know, a little bit more. So what I have over here, it's uh, the the machine that actually has, you know, the main spindle, back spindle, our upper turret. As you can see, the position of of, of them are also clearly uh, uh, this displayed over here. But also, what we have over here, it's our uh, linear turret, which means that this tool can be mounted only here and cannot change the position itself. So it's only for the back spindle, for working on the back spindle. And as well over here, what we have is our turning tool positions. So we can add here as much as we need. So I'll just uh, open over here. Here is the project. And what I have over here is, um, I'll just jump to my tool table itself. And here I have the tool library that consists of a lot of tools. And again, I'll just click on, here I have my linear turret. And maybe I can click on any of these. And I'll just go to my mounting itself. OK, here is the machine. Maybe I can zoom it in. And as you can see, uh, main spindle, back spindle, all our holders are presented over here. That's that's very nice. And as you can see over here, we have our turning tools on our linear turret. Now this is very nice, and uh, but in in order to support linear turrets very well, we need to be able to switch between left and right side, also using the, 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 the delta y position. So, okay, 
our cutting edge direction is on, on the right, so here we don't, will not have any problems. But what will happen if I would like, you know, to use the left one? And for sure I'll need, you know, to, 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 uh, to, to flip it. And this is the example where I have to use, you know, uh, maybe here it should be, uh, sorry, the minus 22. Yeah. And as you can see here, we have the coordinate system itself of our tooltip and of our station. So you need to use delta y in order to position it correctly and to get left uh, cutting edge on your insert. So this is the only only um, only example that you can use it, and uh, just remember it. It's it's mainly for the linear turrets. If you have now uh, any questions, I'm very open to to answer on it. I I I I hope that this tips was very helpful to you, and uh, you will use it in your further demonstration and your. Uh, custom in your uh, actually projects. Eddie, I've just now finished it, and if there is any questions, I'm very open to, to answer it. Yes, Daniel, thank you very much uh, for an excellent webinar. Uh, we have a few questions, uh, but before I will ask these questions, I would like uh, to show something to our resellers, and then I will uh, uh, I will give you back the presentation. Okay, so yeah, okay. I will make me presenter now. And I would like uh, just uh, to show our reseller net uh, pictures from the from the exhibi exhibition, important exhibition, international uh, metal walking exhibition in Bilbao in Spain, where uh, Solidcom Iberica represents us very well, and you can see the pictures. Uh, from the boot, and uh, I'd like uh, to thanks to uh, Solid Com America for very good uh, preparation and and uh, representation of us there. You can see, as usual, uh, uh, they first of all they use their sub resellers net of SolidWorks resellers. You can see in the boot, as usual, uh, advanced uh, CNC machine from their partners. And this case, this is. Uh, uh, very, very nice five axis Matsuura machine. You can see the live cutting, I machining live cutting there. And uh, uh, for example, in this case, they choose to use gearing tools. Again, one of our best uh, partners, uh, tool makers, one of the, our per, uh, best partners worldwide. We put the big screen to show uh, uh, this live cutting to as many audience as possible. So well done, and if your customers or partners or friends go there now, please tell them to visit us. And uh, very nice, guys. We like very much to see these exhibitions when you use live cutting, when, when you cooperate with our partners and leverage the power of solid common die machining. And now, Daniel, I will give you presentation back. Okay, you are presenter again. And I will ask you a few questions. And uh, guys, this is uh, you have a chance now to ask more questions, please. Yes. So. Hey. Yes, 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 Daniel. Okay, sorry. So uh, I will start yeah. with the questions now, guys, and you, please, if you have more questions, ask now. So the, the first question is, uh, can I use multiple MACs in part like in SolidCom 2015? Yes, so <clears throat> it's a great question. So we didn't uh, make a restriction regarding to the multi-MAC -MAC definition. So the, 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 the customers and the, the user and the post-processor writer can define their post-processors and everything can be like it was in the past. So we didn't you know, uh, make any restriction. But we also add this feature, uh, we call it like a single home programming or definition, uh, in order to easier uh, 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 make up uh, programming on the part and use, you know, uh, have this gr great benefit of it, like uh, changing the turrets, uh, changing the, uh, the, the, the coordinate systems, and so on and so on. So 
you can use both ways, so no restriction. Hey Daniel, and before I go to next question, we have here a, a remark uh, it, that it was impressive webinar, both in functionality and presentation. So good job, Daniel, and good job to our developers. And uh, meanwhile, uh, let's go to next question. And the Thank next question is, uh, is it possible in SolidCamp 2016 uh, to move part from Multus to Integrex machine? Because the back spindle coordinate system are reversed in those machines. The question is ah, clear, okay. Daniel? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so it's... Still, it's uh, yeah, it's very complicated. Let's say in question, and uh, it will uh, take uh, a little bit time to explain it. But it, it actually pretty simple. If you are using you know multiple MAC position uh, feature like we have in in 2015, you will not be able to use you know the same same part in both of those machines because you know the orientation and the way of the programming it's different. The only possible way it's to to use Mac one, only one Mac position, to define you know the operations in that way. So in this case, you will be able to use you know on both machines. Of course, with the small differences that the 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 the, the MCOs should be used for a particular machine. So I will say, all the operations will stay same, and will be okay. But you will have to redefine your your MCOs because, as you know, the multus and integrex, the, the 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 position of the uh, the main spindle and back spindle, where it's the upper turret, lower turret, is different as well. With uh, the the MCO, uh, the, the operations are different. So you'll have to just to redefine the MCOs, and uh, everything will work correctly. Okay, Daniel, uh, one second. I'm ch I, I think we have uh, more questions. Okay. We have again here, I see remark that mounting and machine preview option is excellent and very useful for all program programmers. Thank you, Vasho. For sure. Okay, guys, uh, good. Uh, uh, Daniel, thank you very much uh, for this webinar. It's third webinar by you in this series, but I think it's very useful. We receive very good feedback. And guys, of course, you are invited uh, to contact our great uh, Serbian support team. We have four good guys now, qualified experts for solid come there. So once you have question, remark, idea, please contact them. And I promise you, you will receive the best possible support. And now uh, uh, I would like, uh, we just finished the Mai, and I would like to thank you for the very good results we have made in both Asia and Europe, a very good increase by, I think, uh, around 30% up. Good job, guys. We are very appreciate you, and uh, we will continue to work hard to support you. And uh, now I would like to say goodbye. Keep the push. And we'll see you next week in our next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.